This video will explore incrementing in units of one-fifth. In part one, we'll have a recap on identifying and naming fractions and briefly review some ideas about improper fractions, mixed numbers and locating fractions on the number line. In this animation, the orange rod is worth one whole. If the orange rod has a value of one whole, what is the red rod worth? Pause the video and think about this question before you continue. Try to explain your answer to yourself or your partner. I can iterate the red rod five times into the orange rod. One, two, three, four, five. Therefore, the red rod is one fifth of the orange rod. How many fifths are in one whole? Pause the video and work out your answer before continuing. If the orange rod is one whole and the red rod is one fifth of the orange rod, there must be five one-fifths in one whole, so we say that five-fifths equals one whole. One-fifth, two-fifths, three-fifths, four-fifths, five-fifths. We can represent this in an equation like this. Five-fifths equals one. If the orange rod represents one whole, what fraction do the red rods represent altogether? Pause the video and think about this before continuing. Think about whether there's more than one way to say this. A common incorrect answer to this is that the red rods represent 7 tenths. People might think this because they see the two orange rods and think that this is the whole. If this was the whole, then one red rod would be worth one tenth because it could be iterated ten times into the whole. If the red rod is one tenth and you have seven lots of one tenth, then you would have seven tenths of one whole. But this is incorrect because the two orange rods together are not one whole. We were told that one orange rod is one whole. So two orange rods is two holes. So we need to remember that each of the red rods is one-fifth of an orange rod, or one-fifth of the whole. We can see that the red rods together are larger than one whole, so our fraction needs to represent something greater than one whole. Seven-tenths is less than one whole, so this can't be right. We know that the red rod is one-fifth of the orange rod. There are seven one-fifth pieces. One one-fifth, two one-fifths, three one-fifths, four one-fifths, five one-fifths, six one-fifths, seven one-fifths. So the red rods are seven-fifths of an orange rod, or seven-fifths of one whole. We can write this in words like this, seven fifths, or as a numeral like this, seven fifths. We've described the red rods as seven fifths of an orange rod. Do you know another way to say this? Pause the video and try to think of a way to say what fraction the red rods represent compared to the orange rod. We know that the red rod is one-fifth of the orange rod. 
we know that five red rods is equal to one orange rod. So five fifths equals one whole. There are then two more one fifth pieces. This is two fifths. So altogether, the red rods are one and two fifths of an orange rod. We can write this in words like this, one and two fifths, or as a numeral like this, one and two fifths. So there were two ways to write the value of the red rods if one orange rod represents one whole. We can write it as an improper fraction, seven fifths, or as a mixed number, one and two fifths. Although these numerals look different, they represent the same quantity and are in the same position on a number line. This is what this looks like on a number line. The orange rod has a value of one, so two orange rods have a value of two. The red rods are this long in comparison to the orange rod. We can label the number line incrementing in units of one fifth and using improper fractions when the fraction is greater than one. Zero fifths, one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, five fifths, six fifths, seven fifths, eight fifths, nine fifths, ten fifths. We can also label the number line incrementing in units of one fifth but using mixed numbers when the fraction is greater than one. Zero, one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, one. One and one fifth, one and two fifths, one and three fifths, one and four fifths, two. We can see that the red rods can be described as seven fifths of an orange rod or as one and two fifths of an orange rod. Both numerals represent the same number and therefore have the same position on the number line. In part two, we'll see the red rods appear and count a running total of the value of the rods as they appear. We'll explore this with both improper fractions and mixed numbers and then spend some time exploring any patterns and relationships you might have noticed. As you watch the animation, try to figure out what fraction of an orange rod is visible. We'll use the same pieces as before, so the orange rod has a value of one whole, and the red rod is one fifth of an orange rod. You'll need to keep a running total by adding the new parts to the ones you've already seen. Each new part will appear quite quickly. If you're doing this in a group, decide if you're going to say the running total out loud together or silently in your head. If you do it out loud, you'll need to decide before you start whether you're going to count using improper fractions or mixed numbers when the total is greater than one. If you're counting silently in your head, you can do it whichever way you like and compare them at the end. Someone could record the new total each time and at the end you could explore any patterns and relationships you or others noticed. Ready? What was the total by the end of the count? Can you say this as an improper fraction and a whole number? Let's slow that down and check. You can count along together as each part appears. When the amount is the same as or greater than one, we'll count using improper fractions first. We'll look at mixed numbers after. One fifth, two fifths, 
three fifths, four fifths, five fifths, six fifths, seven fifths, eight fifths, nine fifths, ten fifths, eleven fifths, twelve fifths, thirteen fifths, fourteen fifths. 15 fifths. Let's count again, but this time we'll say the fractions that are greater than 1 as mixed numbers. 1 fifth, 2 fifths, 3 fifths, 4 fifths, 1. 1 and 1 fifth, 1 and 2 fifths, 1 and 3 fifths, 1 and 4 fifths, 2, 2 and 1 fifth, 2 and 2 fifths, 2 and 3 fifths, 2 and 4 fifths, 3. What patterns and relationships did you notice in the sequence we just explored? Why do you think these patterns and relationships occurred? The next image shows the full sequence. There are lots of ideas that you might notice for this question. Again, we'll not go through them here, but discuss these with a partner, group or class and then share them with an adult if there is one working with you. In part three, we'll explore some questions connected to what we saw and try to explore some further patterns and relationships that we might have noticed and try to make sense of why these are happening. Here are a few questions about what you saw. Pause the video if you need more thinking time before the possible answers are explored. Try to visualise the red rods. How many fifths are in two holes? Explain how you know. Pause the video to work it out yourself before continuing. We know that there are five fifths in one hole. Two holes are two lots of one hole. So this must be two lots of five fifths, which is ten fifths. So there are 10 fifths in two holes. Try to visualize the red rods. Can you use your answer to the previous question to work out how many fifths will be in four holes? Explain how you know. Remember to pause the video and try and work this out yourself and then resume it when you're ready. We know that one hole is equal to five fifths. So two holes is equal to 10 fifths. Three holes is equal to 15 fifths. And four holes is equal to 20 fifths. So there are 20 fifths in four holes. Another way you might have thought about it was that each hole has five fifths. So five fifths plus five fifths plus five fifths plus five fifths equals 20 fifths. Alternatively, you might have thought if we know that one hole is equal to one lot of five fifths, which equals five fifths, then four holes is going to be equal to four lots of five fifths, or four times five fifths, which is 20 fifths. What patterns and relationships do you notice between the whole numbers, the numerators and the denominators? Can you explain why these patterns occur? 
We'll not go through this question because there are lots of ideas that you might notice. But discuss these with a partner, group or class and then share them with an adult if there is one working with you. Try and visualise the rods. How many fifths are in two and two fifths? Explain how you worked it out. Pause the video before continuing. We know that two holes is equal to ten fifths. We know that there are two additional one fifth parts, which is two fifths. Ten fifths plus two fifths equals twelve fifths. So we can say that two and two fifths is equal to twelve fifths. Hopefully that's helped your understanding of a variety of different ideas relating to fractions, including incrementing in units of one fifth, recording whole numbers as improper fractions, comparing improper fractions and mixed numbers and converting between the two, making sense of where these fractions are on a number line, how to add fractions with the same denominator, and patterns and relationships and why you thought these were happening.